Yo yo, so the salvage yard is a pretty solid business to own in GTA 5 online. With it, you can easily make a million dollars pretty quickly. But Chris, how do we even do that? I got you fam. Cause in this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to make millions with the salvage yard business in GTA online. All right, so starting off with the location, I'm gonna recommend the one in Strawberry for almost $2.6 million. That's the one that I own and I prefer this one cause it's like right in the middle of Los Santos. It's pretty close to properties like my CEO office, my agency, and it's also right next to the vanilla unicorn. So yeah. <laughs> But more importantly, it's pretty close to where you'll have to go for all the missions that we'll be talking about in just a little bit. Now let's go over upgrades. Which ones should you buy and which ones should you just avoid? Starting off with the tint, this is purely just cosmetic, you guys. It's completely up to you if you want to get it, but it is not going to make you any money. So yeah. Now for the get trade rates upgrade, this has absolutely nothing to do with the Savage Yard business. I just want you guys to know that. What this does though is give you a discount for whenever you destroy one of your vehicles. I'm pretty sure it's 50% off all vehicles you destroy. So like, for example, if I were to destroy my Oppressor Mark II, instead of paying the usual $20,000, I'm only paying $10,000 now. And then you also get a discount for whenever you repair a vehicle at Los Santos Customs. Me personally, I think this is worth it in the long run if you're someone who plays a whole lot of GTA Online, but if you don't play that much, then I'd probably pass on this one. Let's be real though, if you're looking at money guides for GTA, you probably play this a lot, huh? Moving on to the upgrades that actually matter, you're definitely gonna wanna buy a tow truck if you wanna make some money here. As for which one to buy, I'm gonna recommend just buying the regular tow truck beater. This one is only gonna cost you $650,000, whereas the bright and shiny tow truck that I bought cost $1.5 one million dollars and they both do the exact same thing so unless you've got hella money to blow just go with the tow truck beater trust me now for the wall safe you're for sure gonna want to pay the seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars to get this so basically even if you don't get the upgrade your salvage yard is still gonna have a safe in it but it'll max out at only a hundred thousand dollars meaning you got to come back to the business way more often to take out the money and trust me this safe is gonna make you a whole lot of money here you guys so you'll have to come back pretty often however if you get the wall safe upgrade it's gonna hold up to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars now meaning that you won't have to come back as often to check on it. So in my opinion, this is definitely worth it. And then for the final upgrade, the staff upgrade, this is 100% worth buying. It costs you $625,000 and what this does is speed up the time that it takes to salvage vehicles that you bring in with the tow truck. Basically, you're gonna be making money even faster with this upgrade. We'll go a little more in depth with how this works in just a second, but pretty much, if you wanna make the most money possible with the salvage yard, then trust me, you're gonna wanna buy this. All right guys, so now that we've got all that out of the way, let's jump into the real reason why y'all even clicked on this video in the first place. Making money with the salvage yard. So the first way to make money with the salvage yard is through the tow truck service. This one is actually really simple, you guys. You're just gonna get into your tow truck inside the salvage yard and press launch tow truck service. Then from there, you're just gonna go to the destination on your map, hook up the vehicle to your tow truck, and then just tow it back to the salvage yard. And depending on how far the vehicle is from your salvage yard, each tow mission should only take you like five to 10 minutes. Now, a couple of tips for you guys. While towing the vehicle back to your salvage yard, you wanna try your best not to damage it. Cause any damage that you do to the vehicle is gonna be taken from your payment afterwards. And I highly doubt you guys wanna be losing out on money. Another thing is that while these missions are pretty easy like I said you might have some people trying to come and take your ass out specifically the cops though because they're mad annoying in these missions they literally rammed the shit out of a vehicle I was towing and made it flip over it was just a whole ass mess but yeah you guys already know how cops are in this game not so easy to lose them especially when you're towing a vehicle in a goddamn tow truck but anyway once you bring the vehicle back to your salvage yard that vehicle is gonna start getting salvaged for parts if you got the staff upgrade like I recommended then this should only take one in-game day or 48 minutes until it's done and you get paid but without the staff upgrade that's gonna be about two in-game days or 96 minutes before you get paid. See, this is why I told you guys that you really want to get that staff upgrade. And while one vehicle is being salvaged, you could go and bring back another vehicle. However, you can only have two vehicles being salvaged at a time. So if you wanted to go tow a third vehicle, then you're going to have to wait until one of those is done being salvaged for parts. But anyway, once a vehicle is finished being salvaged for parts, you're looking at a payout of anywhere from $30,000 to $40,000 per vehicle. Guys, this is a super easy money method right here. Like the fact that you can just go quickly tow two vehicles in like 10 to 15 minutes and then make up to $80,000 dollars from that is pretty nice. I'm definitely a fan of this. But an even nicer way to make money with the salvage yard is through our second money method, which is through his wall safe. So if you guys walk on up the stairs inside of your salvage yard and come inside of this little office up here, your safe will be right here. If you bought the wall safe upgrade like I recommended, then it's going to be hiding behind this poster right here. And the wall safe ties in with the tow truck service that we just went over. The more vehicles you tow and get salvaged, the more money you're going to make every in-game day. And by the way, the most you can make every in-game day from the safe is $24,000. The salvage yard safe kind of works like the nightclub safe for in order to keep making that same amount, you gotta come back every so often into a vehicle. The only thing that sucks here is that you can't see when the popularity goes down. But yeah guys, so the salvage yard safe is a completely passive way to make money. You just come to a vehicle real quick and then you can go do your own thing for a while. So if you don't buy the wall safe upgrade and just use a safe that comes with the salvage yard, then it's gonna max out at $100,000. That means after just four in-game days, you're gonna have to come back to your salvage yard and collect the money in your safe. But if you do get the wall safe upgrade, then your safe will max out at $250,000. That means that you won't have to come collect your safe's money 
money until 10 in-game days. Guys, just buy the wall safe upgrade, it's literally so much better. But now, for the main way to make money with the salvage yard, it's through the salvage yard robberies. In order to start them up, you're gonna wanna come over to this old ass computer right here and press right on your D-pad. And then you're just gonna pick from any of the three vehicles shown here. The vehicles you guys have are most likely gonna be different than the ones I have on screen, and that's because they reset every single Thursday, so yeah, just keep that in mind. All right, so once you select a vehicle to rob, you're gonna see the planning wall. And on this planning wall, you're gonna be able to start up the scope out mission for the robbery. Once you get that taken care of, you'll be able to start up the planning work missions from here as well. And then you'll also have a few task missions scattered around the map as well. Just like the planning work missions, those need to be done before you get started with the robberies finale. Now, there's multiple different robberies within GTA 5 Online, and the ones that you'll have available will also be completely random each week. But all of the planning work and task missions you have to do for them are all really straightforward. You just follow whatever the game tells you to do, pretty much just like any other mission or heist prep. I don't think I gotta explain much here, I think we've all done missions before in GTA Online. But yeah, while I find all these missions pretty straightforward, the task missions you'll find around the map are probably the easiest. You literally do them so quickly. Like you might just have to go grab some weapons real quick and hide them somewhere, or you might have to steal a getaway vehicle for the robbery. They're all just really easy to do, so I don't think you guys will be struggling with them at all. Now, for any optional work you may have, I personally don't think you guys have to do them. Like, I've managed to finish pretty much all of my robberies without any issues. It's not like the casino heist where it's a huge difference doing optional work for it, you know? So yeah, just do the mandatory missions and skip out on the optional ones. Now, for the actual robbery itself, the finale, again, they really aren't too difficult at all. While a lot of other people might compare these robberies to heists, they're nowhere near as difficult as some heists can be, trust me on that. If you guys have ever done the auto shop contracts though, then these are honestly pretty similar to those. There's of course more prep work to do for these, but yeah, they're both pretty simple. The main thing with the robbery though is that your objective here is to steal a vehicle. Once you reach the point in the robbery finale where you have that vehicle, you're pretty much just driving it back to the salvage yard and then you're done with that. Now you're gonna notice that you did not make that much money from it. And hold up, let me finish. The whole point of the robbery was to steal a vehicle, which is where the money's really at. So you're gonna come over to the vehicle that you just robbed, click right on your D-pad and make sure you sell it to Yusuf Amir. Trust me, do not salvage it because you're gonna lose out on a pretty good chunk of money by doing that. Now, all you gotta do here is just drive it over to the docks. It's as simple as that. You obviously wanna make sure you don't crash or damage the vehicle in any way because of course you're gonna have to pay for the damages and also just sell it in an invite only lobby. There is no high demand bonus here like there is for other businesses. So why even risk getting the vehicle destroyed? Just seriously, get your ass in an invite only lobby and race it over to the docks. And once you get it delivered, you're done. Depending on the vehicle you delivered, you're making anywhere from around $250,000 to $400,000. Now guys, while the salvage yard robberies are actually pretty fun, there's a pretty big problem with them and that is that unfortunately you can only do each one once a week. So I mentioned earlier that when you log into the business's computer, there's gonna be three different vehicles available to steal and you can only collect and rob each of those vehicles once, meaning that once you complete the robbery, that's it. You're gonna have to wait until Thursday when the vehicles reset and you're given new robberies to do. So basically you can only complete three robberies a week. There isn't a cooldown like with the auto shop contracts, you just have to wait until the vehicles reset every week. So for those of you who were planning on grinding these robberies out, unfortunately Rockstar said fuck you. Now while I definitely tried my best to go over everything I know about this business, maybe you guys still have some questions. The best place to get an answer is in our channel's Discord server. We've got well over 1,500 people in there, both beginners and veterans. So if you guys need an answer to your questions, want to find some people to play GTA with, or maybe you just want to hop in a lobby with your boy, then definitely be sure to join the Discord server. Link is in the description down below. Before we end off the video, I just want to give you guys some quick bonus tips like always. First of all, you're able to set your salvage yard as a spawn point completely for free. I find that pretty dope because with other properties and businesses like the Kosatka, the Agency, and the Auto Shop, you got to pay an additional fee to be able to do that. So yeah, if you plan on grinding out the salvage yard a lot, then that's pretty neat. And then over here to the right of the planning wall, there's a health pack right here. So if you're low on health from a mission, then that could come in handy too. And lastly, in the same little office room where your safe is, there's a snack bowl right over here. And just like with all your other businesses and properties, you get unlimited snacks here. All the free snacks you want. So my queso looking ass is definitely liking this. Now, while the salvage yard is a pretty solid business, it's definitely not the best. You're only making $24,000 an hour with it, whereas with the nightclub, you're making a fat $50,000 an hour. And luckily for you guys, I've got a guide going over everything you need to know about the nightclub business in GTA Online. So if that sounds interesting, then you'll definitely want to click on the video on screen right now.